next on the Gospel Bill Show. Elmer? Huh? I thought you were sweeping the floor. Oh, yeah. I, I guess I was. You know, sweeping's pretty boring. I'd rather be fishing. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of fun things you'd rather be doing, but work comes first. Work comes first. It's the Gospel Bill Show, featuring Gospel Bill, his sidekick, Nicodemus, Miss Lana, good old Elmer Barnes, and the entire Dry Gulch Gang. I'm sorry, Lana. You need some help over there? Oh, no, that's all right. I'm just going to leave it there. Oh, I apologize. I guess I was really wrapped up in reading this story about the bank robber in Dripping Springs. Really? Yeah, this fellow broke into the bank while it was closed and took out all the money. Calls himself the magician. Well, I guess the name fits. He made all the money disappear. Hello, Lana. Well, Sheriff, I see you're hard at work. Well, Mr. Tutwater, this little article here has a whole lot to do with my work. It seems that there was a bank robbery in Dripping Springs. Well, that's of no concern of mine. What do you mean it's no concern of yours? I mean, you're a banker, aren't you? And this guy robbed a bank in this area. I mean, would you be a little bit concerned about your bank? Well, I might have been, but the federal government just came out with a new insurance policy. Insures my deposits. If it's stolen, I'll be totally reimbursed. So if your bank gets robbed, you get all your money back. Well, that's real nice, but if I were you, I'd prefer to keep my bank from being robbed in the first place. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. As long as this guy's around this part of the territory, his name is the magician, I plan on keeping a real close eye out on your bank. Well, that's your concern, not mine. Just go ahead and do your job, whatever that is. Now, Miss Lana, what I really came over here for is to talk to you about your last payment to my bank. You do realize it was nearly seven minutes late. What? Well, howdy, Elmer. Howdy, Sheriff. Hey, things don't sound like they're going so good. What's the problem? Well, I got money problems. Well, what kind of money problems do you have? I don't have any. Hey, Elmer, I thought you just said that you have money problems. What's the deal? Well, that's it. I don't have any. That's the problem. Now, listen, Elmer, what have you been doing lately? Well, I've been waiting. Well, what are you waiting on? I'm waiting for somebody to give me some money. Elmer, folks are not just going to walk up to you and hand you money. I mean, that's not the way it works. If you want money, you've got to work for it. You've got to do something with your hands, Elmer. Now, what have you been putting your hands to lately? Oh, what am I been putting my hands to? I've been putting my hands on bass and... Crawpee and crawdaddies and catfish. All right, Elmer. Look, I can tell you've been blessed in that, and God said he'd bless what you put your hands to, but that doesn't make you any money. You need to put your hands on something like a broom or a shovel or something like that where you can get a paycheck, Elmer. Now, listen. There are lots of folks around this town who could use a good, strong back like yours. In fact... If I were you, I'd step into Miss Lana's general store here and see if she didn't need some help. Elmer, you need to get yourself a job, and that's when you're going to get your money. See you later. Huh. If I get a job, that'll get me money? What an unusual idea. Down at the farm, there are certain kinds of creatures who help the farmers very much. Sometimes we just don't realize how important these creatures are. They give us many wonderful things, things that we use in everyday life. So let's take a look at the birds on the farm. Now this bird is a guinea. Do you know that guineas help the farmers to get rid of snakes? Ugh, I think I'll get myself a guinea or two. And this big guy is a tom turkey. That's what male turkeys are called. Of course, turkeys give us their meat to eat, especially at holiday time. Mm, yum, yum. There are wild turkeys and domestic turkeys in the United States. 
And these are chickens. They give us feathers to stuff pillows and eggs and, of course, chicken. There's fried chicken, baked chicken, chicken and dumplings, barbecued chicken, and chicken nuggets. Not to be confused with gold nuggets, of course. Most of these chickens are hens, but there is a rooster in the bunch. His red comb is bigger than those of the hens, and he also has a beard. I think maybe he needs a shave. Then there are ducks. Ducks give us roast duck yum yum. Do you know why they're by the water? It's because they like to swim. A duck's webbed feet are great for swimming and for standing on one leg. Kitchy, kitchy, goo. And then there's always a show off in the bunch. Petunia peacock loves to show off her feathered hat. Peacocks are among the most colorful birds in the animal kingdom. Boy, do they make a lot of noise. Well, I guess it's so that they'll be noticed. Well, these birds all have a special place on the farm, just as you have a special place in God's kingdom. I guess we're a lot like the birds. My sister even says that. She thinks that I'm a goonie bird. I wonder what kind of a bird a goonie bird is. A goonie bird, hmm. I wonder if I really am a goonie bird. Howdy, Miss Lana. Hello, Elmer. How are you today? Well, I'm broke. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you real sorry? Well, sure. Are, are you sorry enough to give me a job? Give you a job? Uh, well, what can you do, Elmer? Well, Gospel Bill says I got a real strong back. A strong back. That gives me an idea. Elmer, could you carry heavy boxes from the storeroom into here? Well, how heavy are they? Well, heavy enough. Well, I guess so. Well, can you sweep? Sweep? Well, you know, sweep the floor with a broom. Well, I guess so. Well, Elmer, you've got yourself a job. What? You're hired. I am. You now work for the Dry Gulch County General Store. Well, you think I could write home to Mama and let her know? No, you don't have time for that, Elmer. We've got to get to work. Well, I got to celebrate somehow. I know, there ain't no better way than celebrating with food. <laughs> Elmer, we need to get busy. Uh-huh, sir. Excuse me, Sheriff. Just what exactly are you doing? I was inspecting your bank, Mr. Tutwater. Oh, well, I uh, hope it meets your approval. You know, I wish you'd put some bars on this window over here. Now, Sheriff, just why would I want bars on my windows? I told you already today, Mr. Tutwater, we've been having bank robberies, burglaries in this territory. You know, the guy, the magician. I was telling you all about him. He hit Dripping Springs, and he's liable to show up here. Sheriff, Sheriff, you have got to learn how to relax. Why no criminal in his right mind would try to rob my bank? Why, anybody that's even thought about it, you've caught. Now listen, Mr. Tutwater, the day that I sit back and just take it easy is the day that your bank starts getting robbed. Well, I'm not going to tell you how to do your job, but you just milling around here, it's just not good for business. Now, why can't you just move along, huh? Don't you have anything to do? No, I reckon not. Well, just sweep the floor. Well, I don't think the floor needs sweeping. Looks good to me. <sighs> Elmer, I think you need to sweep the floor. Okay. Sweep, sweep, out of sight, out of mind. sweeping the floor. Oh, yeah. I, I guess I was. You know, sweeping's pretty boring. I'd rather be fishing. 
Well, I'm sure there's a lot of fun things you'd rather be doing, but work comes first. Work comes first. How do you like this? I just get my birthday card from my grandmother, and instead of sending me any money, all she does is send a card. I don't get one red cent. This is terrible. How can I join the soccer team if I don't get $10? Grandma, you really goofed up this time. Hi, Eugene. Hi, Jeannie. You are looking at a frustrated soccer player. Well, what do you mean? I was wanting to join the soccer club, but now I can't. Why can't you? Mom said you could this morning. She said if I came up with ten bucks, but nobody is giving me any money. What do you mean? Well, Jeannie, I just got my birthday card from Grandmother, and it didn't have any money in it. She didn't send me a dime. She doesn't have to send you money all the time. But I'm just a kid. People are supposed to give me money. Eugene, you better learn one thing right now. If you want to get money, you're going to have to do something for it. Like what? Like work. You just said my most unfavorite word. But, Eugene, that's the way money comes. You can't expect people just to come around to you all the time handing you free money. You have all kinds of jobs you could do around the house to earn money. Don't be so lazy. Oh, Jeannie, I don't want to work. Then you won't get any money. I can promise you that. John, thank you for your deposit. I appreciate your business. Sheriff, what are you still doing here? I'm just keeping an eye out on your bank. What have I got to do to convince you? This bank is built like a rock. Well, I was personally involved in its engineering from the ground floor up. And besides, I have insurance. Well, your insurance isn't going to count for much, Mr. Tutwater, if one burglar breaks through this bank. You see, the word will get out. There'll be another burglar come and another after him, and pretty soon your rates will be so high, you won't be able to get insurance. There won't be a bank in Dry Gulch for folks to put their money in. I just can't let that happen. Sheriff, that might happen anyway. If you keep hanging around here, you're hurting business. Now run along. Well, I guess you do have a point. I can see where folks would get nervous to see the sheriff standing beside the bank. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch this bank from a little further off. But I'm telling you something, Mr. Tutwater. I'm going to keep my eye on this place. And if that burglar shows up, my hard work is going to pay off. I'm going to catch him. That sheriff, he works too hard. But I'm not going to tell him. Uh, Elmer, uh, would you take that crate back to the storeroom for me, please? Well, if you thought it looked so good in the storeroom in the first place, would you bring it out here for? back there. Oh, kinda. Can I take my two-hour break now? I'm real tired. We don't have two-hour breaks, Elmer, and you haven't done enough to be tired. Well, I thought I did. <sighs> Elmer, this just isn't working out. I mean, I don't have the kind of money to pay for someone that's not really working. You mean you're going to give me a raise? No. Elmer, you just don't work here anymore. What are you trying to say? Well, I'm just saying it's not working out. You'll understand. You mean I'm fired? <laughs> you don't work here anymore, Elmer. I don't work here anymore. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, no. What's the problem, Elmer? Oh, it's that cruel, mean, awful Miss Lana. Now, you wait just a minute. Miss Lana's not cruel or mean or awful. Now, what happened? Well, she fired me. Well, she must have had a good reason. What did she say? All I was trying to do was take a break. Elmer, I've known Miss Lana for a long time, and she's a kind and gentle person, and she wouldn't fire you just for taking a break. Oh, well, she did. I'm out of a job, aren't I? 
I don't think you're telling me the whole story, Elmer. Now let's go right back inside this store and we're going to find out exactly why Miss Lana let you go. Miss Lana, Elmer here tells me that you and he had a little trouble today. Well, yes, we did. She gave me the axe. Oh, come on, Elmer. I don't believe a word of that. Would you tell me what really did happen? Well, I was paying him to sit around. Wasn't that good enough? No, Elmer, that's not good enough. You're going to have to learn to work hard without the boss looking over your shoulder all day telling you what to do. Elmer, you got to learn to be diligent. Well, that sounds like a real job. Well, it is a real job, Elmer. If you want real money, you've got to do real work. And you got to work hard with the boss there or with the boss not there. Well, I ain't gonna get no pay now. I ain't got no job. Well, excuse me for just a second. Do you suppose that you could give him a second chance? Well, sure. Thanks. Elmer, Miss Lana's gonna give you another go of it. What do you think? I think I better get busy. Excuse me. Secure as ever. I don't know what that sheriff worries about. Appreciate you giving old Elmer a second chance. Oh, that's all right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Mr. Tut Mr. Tutwater. If you're here, who's at the bank? Well, there's no one at the bank, Sheriff. It's closing time. I just locked it up. I'm on my way home. When the bank is closed is probably the time that the magician will strike. Listen, I'm going to go back over there and check your lock. Sheriff, it's closing time. You need to go home. You don't need to do that. Now, listen, Sheriff, this is not necessary. I locked that door not five minutes ago. I just want to check it again, Mr. Tudwater. I thought you said you locked this door. I did. Well, you stay right here. Hold it right there, Mr. Hands in the air, and you step right out this way. Mr. Tudwater, looks like you won't have to use your insurance this time. Give the banker back his money. Sheriff, I'm real sorry for doubting you. I, I guess your hard work really did pay off. Yeah, I'm just doing my job, Mr. Tutwater. Come on, sticky fingers. Let's see now. I get done in here. I go into the kitchen. Then I go into the dining room. After I get done with the dining room, I clean the garage. After I get done with the garage, let's see now, I rake leaves, and then I got 10 bucks, 10 bucks, and now I can join the soccer team. Hooray! Hey, this working for money isn't such a half bad idea. I wish I would have thought of it sooner. Hi, Eugene. Listen, let's go outside and jump some rope. I'm sorry, Jeannie, I can't right now. I got lots of work lined up to do. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, ma'am. I'm working in here, cleaning up my room. Then I go to the dining room and the kitchen. Then I go to the garage. And then I go outside and I rake some leaves. And when I get done, I'm going to earn $10. Hey, that's great. Then you can join the soccer team. You bet, Jeannie. I am working for money. Hey, I wished I would have thought of this sooner. Yeah. Where'd you get the idea? I don't know, Jeannie, but I'll tell you one thing. It's a whole lot better than sitting around waiting on folks to give you money. Working's not bad for you at all. 
Howdy, Sheriff. <laughs> well, howdy, Elmer. You look awfully excited. Oh, I am. Today's payday. I'm bringing home the bacon, the bread, the dough, the box, the cold hard cash. <laughs> I get the message, Elmer. I get the message. And today's my day off. I'm headed down to the fishing hole. I haven't been fishing in five whole days. Makes me feel like a duck out of water. <laughs> well, Elmer, it just sounds to me like you've learned your lesson. I mean, you and Lana must be just working together just fine. Oh, I have learned my lesson. I learned how to work even if nobody's looking over my shoulder. Well, it sounds to me like you really are enjoying your work. Oh, yeah, I guess I am. It ain't that bad. You really do like working, do you? Oh, yeah, I said I did. You know, I've got the dirtiest jail floor in this territory, Elmer, and it's gonna take just a whole lot of work to clean it up, so why don't you take this broom and just get after it? Oh, no, Sheriff, I said I like working, but I like fishing a whole lot better. I gotta go. <laughs> Hey, do you know what these tools remind me of? They remind me of work, hard work. You know, some of you might think that work is a bad word, but it's really not. Work can be very good for you. In fact, work is the tool that God has put into the earth for us to use to earn money. He expects you to work. In fact, the Bible says that if you don't work, you shouldn't eat. Now, even when you're young, you can learn how to work. You can do jobs around your house. You can help your mom, your dad. You can help brothers and sisters. It never hurts to learn how to work. And whether you get paid for it or not, you need to learn how to develop work habits because there will be a day that will come when you'll have to work and earn your own money. And if you're ready for that, you'll do a whole lot better than those folks who are lazy. I want to tell you, the Bible says that the people who are lazy always wind up being poor. But if you learn to work hard and to work smart right now, God will bless you the rest of your life, and you'll find that things will be a whole lot better for you. You'll always be able to earn what you need if you learn how to work. So, don't be lazy. Pick up your tools and go to work, and you watch God's blessings come your way. Oh. 
You know, work is good, but there's one thing you can't work for, and that is salvation. You can't save yourself by working hard. You can't save yourself by doing good. It's important to work hard and to do good, but that's not how we receive salvation. We receive salvation by trusting in Jesus Christ to be our personal Lord and Savior. And when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, I want you to wash away all my sins, and I call on you to be my Lord, He comes into your heart, and He does something that no amount of work can ever do. He washes away all your sins. 